Ben, speaking of dumb, yeah. let's uh, let's do these in reverse order. We'll get to the no. Rogan no. did something masterful. I, I mean, honestly, I didn't really. You've been talking with people that I don't particularly care to talk about, frankly. But you uh, you had another uh, collision with a guy. I don't I don't think he has the kind of presence uh, now than he had a couple of years ago. The last I heard of Stefan Molyneux was um, Dave Rubin changing the name of a really great conversation they had about brain sizes. That speaking <laughs> of. Uh, things that sound like they're coming from the worst parts, the most grotesque parts of the 18th century. So, I mean, look, I would define Stefan Molyneux as, you know, a couple of years ago, one of the prime reactionaries uh, and kind of like pop pseudo intellectual hierarchists online. Yeah. How would you define them? And what did you guys debate about? And do we yeah. have some, do we have sound or clips of this? Oh, uh, we do. Yep. Okay. Take okay. it away, Ben. Yeah, we've got a clip of him and then a clip of me responding. So, um, so yeah, Stefan Molyneux um, is uh, is a weird reactionary clown. He's uh, officially uh, a libertarian. He'll even say he's an anarcho-capitalist, but somehow he also supports Trump and uh, and supports all these immigration restrictions. Um, and you know, I, I certainly hope his star has fallen, although. I would also say that something that um, that we should keep in mind when it comes to a lot of these guys is that unfortunately uh, their floor is way higher than we'd like it to be. So um, a one of these guys in a state of decline is still like uh, you know Stefan Molyneux who's got uh, close to a million YouTube subscribers. You know, like you know Word. that's you know un unfortunately. Uh, if we lived in a better world, you know, he would be, he would be like somebody with like ten followers on Twitter yelling about IQ, and nobody would pay attention. Right. But it's not the world we live in. Um, and I initially had a run in with him uh, last year. I had um, I had pointed out on on Twitter that um, he had written this book called Art of the Argument, and in the book. Um, his, you know, validity and soundness are two things that you literally learn the definitions of on the first day of a college logic class. And he'd written a book about this and he'd somehow managed to badly mess up those definitions. So I gave him a little bit of shit about this on Twitter and he blocked me. And our mutual friend and mutual editor, Doug Lane, had issued a I don't know that Doug is, oh, okay, our mutual friend. Okay, yes. good, right. Yes. Doug is not friends with Stefan. No, Molyneux. no, Doug, Doug is not. <laughs> well, you can be friends or you can be friends with Stefan with me and uh, you, or you can be friends with Stefan Mullen. You can't do both. But, exactly. Uh, uh, but yeah, um, so Stefan Molyneux had, uh, so Doug had issued a, a debate challenge on my behalf uh, right after that, that interaction. And we'd uh, put out a video about it and had a little fun with it, you know, knowing that he'd ignore it, which he did. And then after about a year of ignoring it, he was like, hey, let's do it. Um, so not quite sure what happened there, but uh, was, was, more than, uh, was more than happy, uh, was more than happy to do it. And I think, you know, I think the best way to think about this, you know, I mean, obviously I had, you know, like I had some fun doing it. Like I think just kind of uh, being able to, you know, just maybe poke a couple of holes in that, you know, is, is good. And I think, you know, I'm, I'm not under any illusions that anybody who's actually a member of Molyneux's cult, you know, is, is going right. to see that and, you know, come around. But I think that my hope is that if anybody is in a place where they, where they are starting to wonder about some of this stuff, or especially somebody who maybe watched a couple of videos is kind of Molyneux curious, you know, but is not really a hardened, fan uh if they're starting to like wonder you know if all this adds up right this could help crystallize some of those doubts but in any case um you know most though the official the official title was the ethics of capitalism but i really wanted to skewer him on this obvious contradiction between claiming to be a libertarian or even an anarchist and having these crazy racist views about immigration um so you know, I tried to, to bring it up a couple times and he kind of batted it away. 
and then uh, and then it got brought up in one of the chat questions and we ended up having this exchange i think we can just watch the two clips back to back and one of them answers the other in a pretty natural way just gotta ask you where's your heart i mean good heavens the blacks in america have suffered so enormously under slavery under jim crow under segregation they were just beginning to pick themselves up and start to join the middle class enormously uh, after the um, uh, after the end of the 1950s and into the 1960s. Then the welfare state came and eviscerated. The single mother welfare state came along and eviscerated the black family, which just got trashed. And then mass immigration came in and ground them into the dust when it came to just being able to earn money and support their families. I mean, it's just been absolutely brutal. And doesn't America have a special obligation? to the blacks in America to ensure that they have as great a future as humanly possible, rather than pouring all the money into supporting every other culture, language, race, and religion that wants to come into America and drive down the wages of the most vulnerable, the most persecuted, the most ground down group in American history are further being ground down by the left's greed for free and easy votes. And I think it's absolutely unconscionable. A few things to try to paper over the obvious contradiction between Stefan's free market libertarianism uh, and the idea that it's legitimate for the state to get in the way of free market interactions between landlords or employers who want to employ people or give them housing uh, who are currently in other countries and those people accepted those offers. Uh, one was this business about how people are going to vote for left-wing politicians or accept welfare services. And if the mere fact that some that members of some group are more likely to do these things is a good enough reason to restrict their rights then there's no particular reason unless you hold the premise that the state has a moral right to do whatever they want with the country they own which would give you the opposite of anarcho-capitalism unless you accept that premise uh, those two things can't fit together and i was even more surprised when he started using these consequentialist arguments about uh how third world nations are disadvantaged because the best and the brightest leave. So that's a good enough reason to violently stop them from uh, from coming here or about how third world immigration is supposedly bad uh, for um, you know African-Americans in terms of economic consequences. Because if Stefan really thought that it was okay to violate property rights, anytime violating property rights had good consequences for black people in America or for people in the developing world, then he and I would disagree on far less than we actually do. Well, thanks, I appreciate the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else to add to that. I mean, it, 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 you know, watching like for a guy who has attempted to popularize some of the most embarrassing, disgusting, skull measuring shit, which is my understanding of what he's tried to do. And then do, and, and conservatives do these crocodile tear, tears a lot because they see profit basically in trying to, to stoke division. Uh, you know, between basically between black people and, and people immigrating to the country. Uh, that's, that's a, that's a very typical tactic. You, I mean, I like that though. I mean, there's a lot for people to learn there cause you didn't get lost in all of the bullshit and all of the obvious hypocrisies. You just said, wait, all of a sudden we're talking about the public good and public policy. I guess you're about to stop being a complete asshole and become a democratic socialist. Cool. Uh, <laughs> I, I do want to give credit. I don't know who this is, but um, it's Nate Wojo on, on Twitter who had my favorite summary of the debate, which uh, was this. Molyneux, ridiculous framing. Ben starts to explain why his premise is ridiculous. Molyneux, address the argument. Ben sips beer, raises eyebrow. Comment section, Jew. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say, I thought it was good that we, we had the comment section open there because I saw one comment go by. It said, get this guy a Nintendo Switch. I want to see his soy face, I think is what the comment said. So. <laughs> it's, it's, and it's, I saw a beta. <laughs> <laughs> The, that vibrant intellectual culture that's being cultivated over there. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video. Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish.
click subscribe below and become a patron as well patreon.com slash tmbs thanks everybody